good morning everyone in the last class we are trying to check with the some module operator example and today we are going to work with the remaining operator logic here so carefully observe i am going to create one more class here the name of the class we are going to make as a something the basic math basic math right so after that what i am doing here i am trying to create a main method inside this particular class what i am going to write i am defining one data type called integer data type and here so the simple addition operation here and after that so b is equals to a multiplication 3 c is equals to so b divided by 4 something i want to add all the mathematic related example here and into d is equals to c minus a into e is equals to minus d so these are the the basic example we want to cover here and carefully observe here in the line number 5 so simply we are trying to add 1 plus 1 right something call it addition operation and we are working on the multiplication operation here and using the division something call abstraction and same way we are doing the same subtraction here we will see the line number 9 how it will work here right so to work on that first what we can do here so we'll try to print the all the values here system dot out dot print ln using this particular method we are trying to print the message on on the console here so here i want to make a is equals to plus a same way we can copy b and we will try to change c finally e so these are the the basic arithmetic operators we are going to work here and let me run the same example try to focus on the the a a value b value so what exactly we are going to get here okay observe here the a value how much we are getting 2 and whatever the b value we are getting 6 so why we are getting 6 here basically what we are doing initially so we are trying to check with we are trying to check with a is equals to 2 right and after that what we are doing here a into th- so basically this 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 kind of uh, multiplication operation we are trying to perform what is the a value we are having 2 so based on that this particular value it's become 6 right and after that what we are doing here and the c value we are getting how we are getting the c value something called 6 by 4 so whatever the the division operator is going to return 
we are going to get the the c value here so right now the c value we are getting one and after that what we are going to do here d value how we are getting the d value the c value we are getting one and the a value we are getting two a value we are getting two getting the point so basically we are getting minus one value for this particular d same way if you check with this particular e we are getting one because already it is minus so because of that we are getting the one value here so these are the the basic arithmetic operation we are trying to perform here getting the point and after that whatever you want to perform same way you can work with any data type like a short all int long as well as we can work with the same float and a double here so these are the same example we can work with the remaining data types also so we'll try to check with other data types here back to here so basically this particular division operator is going to re uh, return whatever the value we are going to get a right side section the division operator but the module operator is going to return whatever we are going to get as a reminder getting the point so this is important here basically whenever we are working with this particular arithmetic of uh, some basic mathematic operations so this particular module operator will return this value this particular division operator will return this value getting the point so this is very important like uh, which value is going to return when we are discussing this particular division related operations here okay back to here we'll try to implement one more the data type here we want to check with the double data type here same thing i want to check with the one plus one and here same i want to use here db by 4 and do d d is equals to dc minus j yeah. so here also we can check because so d a and a we are having same value and after that now observe here what we can do simply we'll try to print and do make sure to identify i want to print some line here okay so we'll try to run the same example one more time here so only the difference here so initially we are checking with the uh, into data type now we are checking with the uh, double data type so you can observe here even though if you are not providing any after dot any values here we are getting the the dot values here because the double data type is going to provide the the decimal the decimal values here getting the point and initially if it is not there by default we are going to get 2.0 same way we are going to get 6.0 but whenever we are performing multiplication operation we are getting so the exact value here that is called 1.5 and when we are doing the subtraction we are getting so 0.5 but you can observe here the exact value we are unable to get when we are working with the into data type getting the point and when we are doing this particular again subtraction 
we are getting 0.5 so these are the the exact value we are going to get when we are working with a double data type so this is something nearest value we are going to get here the nearest value we are going to get when we are doing some ma basic mathematic operation here so right now we'll try to move on to the one more important concept here something called so assignment operator how exactly this particular assignment operators will work here and now the simple one here to work on the particular arithmetic operation what i am going to do so int a is equals to in, so initially a plus 4 but here what we are checking here the a value it must be initialized right now so carefully observe a is equals to 0 and a is equals to a plus 4 so this is going to work here initially what what is the a value we are going to get the a value we are going to get 0 and based on 0 what we are doing here we are trying to add the additional four values here and whatever the updated value we are going to get again what we are doing here we are trying to reassign into the the a value again what we are doing here we are trying to reassign into the a value so carefully observe here so one more another way to perform the same operation here something called so a plus is equals to 4 a plus is equals to 4 cutting the point so this is nothing but the component assignment operator we are going to work here whenever we are working like this so basically if you are trying to work with like this what we are doing internally the same step is going to the same step is going to perform internally a is equals to a plus plus how we are doing the explicitly but whenever we are uh, making like this we are going to get internally the same steps here so this is the one more way to work on the something called the component assignment operator right so same way we are going to have for the other data types also so if you want to check the module operators we can like and you can check some arithmetic operation getting the point something called some multiplication operation if you want to find so these are the these are the ways we can work with the component assignment operator so just here basically to work on the one more style we are going to specify this but internally what is doing here internally a is equals to a plus plus how exactly we are implementing same way all these particular operators are going to implement it so that is internally it's going to implement here cutting the point and now what we can do here we'll try to check with a simple example on this particular related so observe here a is equals to 1 and b is equals to 2 c is equals to 3 and after that what i am doing here so a plus is equals to 5 and so b multiplication equals to 4 and here i'm making the module operator here using this particular sum value here right so you can check here initially we'll check with c plus is equals to what i what i need to do something we want to get some bigger value 
so that's the reason i'm making one more multiplication operation here one more multiplication operation here right after that what we can do we'll try to print all the values here so carefully observe how exactly it's going to working internally like how the value is going to change here so a is equals to 6 b is equals to 8 c is equals to 3 so we'll now what we can do we'll put a breakpoint here we'll try to check within the debug mode how this particular data is changing now you can check the right side section here a value 1 b2 c3 so you can check here in the right section right side section observe the a value how much we are getting the a value changed to 6 why it is changed to 6 why it changed to 6 high now it is changed so simply a is equals to a plus 5 a plus 5 is nothing but 1 plus 5 we are having so that is we are becoming we are getting this value 6 again the 6 value we are assigning into the a so that is indicating this particular line getting the point same way the so b we are trying to multiply here we are getting 8 so how we are getting here the multiply value basically b is equals to so b multiplies something called 4 initially what is we are going to get the 2 so 2 into 4 2 into 4 we are getting 8 the 8 value again we are assigning into this particular b same way this c now what we are doing here a value how much we are getting the a value 6 6 into something called 8 right the whatever the value we are going to get we are assigning into 6 so carefully observe here now the c value 51 now the c value 51 and after that what we are doing here we are trying to check with the module operator here so this this line is providing 51 getting the point again we are having one more line here and here we are working with some module operator here we'll try to check with the module operator so observe here sorry 51 because c value we are having 51 51 module operator and how much we are we are trying to check something called 6 so whatever the remainder value we are going to get so that is again we are returning into again we are returning into this particular c variable so this is the way the particular operators are going to work so that is called 6 sorry 3 we are getting here the c value we are getting 3 the final output here we are going to get this so this is the way the values are going to change here and we can check here how exactly the each value is changing and whenever we are performing any operator here so this is all about the the particular component assignment operator so this is also very important where we can implement back to here one more example here increment time to decrement operator so in the increment so in the increment how we are doing basically a is equals to a plus one so in the initially we had uh, like we implemented like this a is equals to a plus one so whatever the a value we are having we are trying to increment with the one so for example we are having a value one now the a value we are going to get to again the two value we are ascending into same a value same way we are going to have a plus plus so the a plus plus also is going to perform same like how we are trying to work with this particular a is equal to a plus one but only the difference here we are not going to specify we are not going to specify the particular variable name multiple times so simply we will define the variable name and we are going to specify the the increment operators here 
so this is the way we can work with a plus plus right and same way one more year a is equals to a minus one a is equals to a minus one how we are going to perform we are we can work with the decrement operator a minus minus we can work with this particular operator called a minus minus so how we we are going to subtract the value and this is also the same way to subtract the value so this is called the decrement operator this is called increment operator right now we are having two more operators here we are having two more operators so observe here and x is equals to 42 and x is equals to 42 and what i am doing here and y is equals to 0 and y is equals to 0 and here the y value i am getting here using this particular x using this particular x observe here we are using here also the increment operator but here the place wherever we use the increment operator is different compared to this particular x here getting the point now what we are doing here we are trying to use before the variable name the particular increment operator but here after the variable name we are using this particular increment operator here so this is we are going to call the line number 42 it is a post increment operator this is the pre increment operator so this is the pre pre increment operator getting the point observe carefully now how exactly the values are going to work now how exactly the values are going to work so we'll try to implement the simple example on this so we'll try to focus how exactly the data is going to print here and uh, i want to copy the two variables here and after that what we are doing here into c i am declaring into d i am declaring so only the two values we initialize a and b the c and d just we declare the values sorry we declare the variables okay and after observe here c is equals to c is equals to plus plus b and do d is equals to a plus plus right and after that i want to make c plus plus i want to make c plus plus so we'll try to check with the same example using this particular System dot out dot printl and method and here what we are doing here we're trying to change the the variable name so that we are going to get the the output of this particular variable directly we can debug the code here directly we can debug the code so again carefully observe so these two are declared here so that's the reason it's not calling directly it's moving on to c what is the b value we are having now we can observe b also increased getting the point and the increased value we are getting c b also increased the increased value we are getting to c and now you can observe here the d1 whenever we are making the plus plus operator Still the value is not changed here. Still the value not changed here. Okay. Whenever we are coming out of this particular D, the value changed to A value, but here the D value we are getting, whatever the initially the A value we are having. Observe carefully, A value initially one, but using this particular operator, the A value changed but now 
the changed a value it is not yet initialized to the d now the a value is 2 but now we are getting the d value still 1 so getting the difference here this particular operator and so this is little bit some difference here we are having little bit some difference so basically before initializing the value it's going to increment the value and the incremented value is going to initialize the incremented value is going to initialize whatever the variable we are initializing here but here if you are in like same way if you are trying to initialize after initializing after initializing the value this particular variable is going to increase getting the point so that is the difference here now if you observe the incremented value we are getting to see so you can check here the a b and c values we are having same but same way if you are checking here the d value and a value we are not having the same value because of this particular operator here so that is the difference here okay back to here we'll check with the c plus plus again we are increasing the c value so finally these are the outputs we are going to get make sure here whenever we are working with this particular operators whenever we are working with this particular increment decrement operators it is very important the pre increment operator what it will do first is going to increase the value the increased value is going to assign uh, like initialize into the so whatever the variable we are trying to initialize and uh, the post increment operator after initializing the after initializing the value is going to increment and you can check with uh, the subtraction values here something called the decrement operator here right we'll go back to the one more example here now we'll check with the uh, so logical operators we are going to check here and do so before checking with the logical operator we'll try to move on to the the relational operators here relational operators the naming uh, name of the each operator it, uh, it is important to so understand how exactly the operators are going to work here back to here basically in the last class already we identified this particular double equals operator how it's going to work and uh, same way one more example we want to make here so this is we already identified in the last class now we want to check one more operator this particular not equals to and uh, the greater than already we identified less than also we identified so same thing greater than or equals to or less than or equals to so we'll try to focus on the all at one more time here to check how exactly this particular relational operators are going to work here and uh, try to identify here so simply i want to change a value become 4 and uh, the b value become 1 and uh, now I want to check directly here. C is equals to A less than B. C is equals to A less than B. But here we can't make C as an int type. We can change to Boolean type. We'll try to make comment here. Okay. So we'll focus. So this operator we already identified the particular the a less than b getting the point now what we can do the remaining here we'll try to check with the remaining here something called let me make a condition here so that is a good option to make 
a equals to equals to b so simply we can write once is out here a and b equals okay so if it is not equal we are not going to get this message here so only we can understand whether the, this particular condition is returned true or false same way i want to make one more condition here and uh, so if a not equals to b you want to print not equals so both the values are not equals getting the point and uh, so one more here a greater than or equals to b we'll print this particular value so a greater than b right now one more we can check so b less than or equals to a so these are the operators we are going to work here and we can check the values first we can check the values later we will check with this condition so what which condition is going to print now turn as a java application we can observe here a value we are getting 4 b value 1 the c value we are getting false so why we are getting this particular c value false here because so we are having a value little bit bigger than the c b value so that's the reason the less than operator returning false here the less than operator returning false and later we can check so we are getting this condition is not satisfied we are getting this particular a and a not equals to b a and b values are not equals and later a b a greater than b a greater than b we are getting so it's nothing but greater than or equals operators how it's checking here first it's going to check whether this particular a value is bigger than the b value or not first it's going to check if it is not what it will do second time the a value is equal to b or not is going to check so this is the two operations are going to perform internally whenever we are working greater than or equals so either greater than or equal getting the point so two operations are going to work internally so it is only one condition same way is going to check with less than or equals to getting the point so these also it's printing so this is the way we can work with the particular relational operators now we'll move on to the logical operators in the logical operators we are going to check with something called and operator or operator so something and do one more and and do r r so ternary operator so this we are going to cover here and do so these two are coming from the bitwise operators and these are the coming from the short circuit operators we are going to call and we will check how exactly this particular logical operators are going to work. Finally, we will check with one ternary operator. And so same thing we can work with the equal operators for this particular and. And so we will try to focus on the same example. I am creating one more class here. Something called.
boolean logic so because all the these values are going to return true or false only and uh, boolean a is equals to true b is equals to false c is equals to and uh, boolean d is equals to a and b c we are making a or b and d we are making a and b and uh, one more here something called e so carefully observe here i am making not a i am making one more condition and so b and after that r condition i am making inside this particular r i want to make a and do something a and do not b a and do not b so we'll check carefully observe here so what we are doing here not operator we are using so just now we identified the particular not operator and after that we are making one and operator and here also and operator after and operator we are making one more not operator and finally we'll check this particular if not a not a what exactly the not a value it's going to return so this is the better to make on top of the e and we'll try to check with all the conditions here we'll try to check with all the conditions so simply a is equals to a okay now so b and o the c how we are making here something call a r b that is equals to c and we will check with the d a and b and if here not a we want to make f and finally so we are having some bigger value we'll try to copy and here we can make e so carefully observe just i want to print so for this uh, condition this value is returning for this condition this value returning so just understanding i am making some little bit of readability now observe we'll try to open little bit bigger here a value we are getting true a value we made true so still you can observe the b value we are getting true why we are getting true here anywhere we change okay basically reference is wrong here we used to make b but i made c here now you can observe because this two we did not change anything so we need to get the same value here a is true and b false and now you can check this particular c condition what is doing here so is going to check r condition here or condition in the sense so we can have option here so either if the condition will true, return true if this condition will return true is not going to check this particular or condition so whenever this particular block is returning false 
So then only it will enter into the another block is going to check here. Getting the point. So that is the behavior we are going to have this particular R condition here. But make sure, so we are having some difference between, so this R condition or this R condition. This is coming from the bitwise and this is coming from the, the short circuit we are going to call. So we'll see what, uh, where we can use this particular, the short circuit and where we can use. Getting the point. And back to here, the R condition, what is doing here? Already this particular A is returning true. So that's the reason it will not check for the, this particular B. Right, so it's returning true. Same way, this particular D, what is going to do? Basically, I want to specify here, whenever we are making this particular AND operator, what it will do, whenever we are having the block of code, and after that we are making some AND operator here, and after that we are having some block of code. So this particular AND condition is going to check here. Whenever it is returning true only, it will go to the this particular block. If returning false, it will not check this. Basically, that is uh, uh, the logic behind here. It has to be true. And uh, this is also be true. Getting the point. So if the both are true, then only it will return true. Otherwise, if anything is false, either this false or this false, what is going to do? The entire expression is going to return false. Getting the point. So I will explain how exactly this particular uh, AND condition sorry, is going to work. But it is exactly opposite to R. R here, what we are going to do? Some block of code and R condition. Here we are having one more. If this particular block is returning true, it will not check for this. Because either this has to be written true or this has to be written true. So that is, that is a condition we are going to make here. Getting the point. So once it is written true, it will not go for this. But whenever it is returning false, the first condition is going to check for the, the second condition, whether the second condition is returning true or not. So in some case, if the second condition is returning true, the R condition will return true. Getting the point. So basically, so in any condition is going to return true. If any condition is not satisfied, so it's going to return false, this particular R. But make sure this particular AND condition, it has to satisfy both the condition. If any, any condition is failed, the entire expression is going to return false. So that is the behavior is going to have this particular AND and R. So we'll check the simple table how exactly is going to work here. And here, because of that, what we are getting here, A is returning true, but B, we are getting false. The entire D, we are going to get false. So entire D, we are getting false here, because this particular block, it has to satisfy all the conditions, but only one condition satisfied, that is A. The B, still it's returning false. And now you can check this particular F, not A not here in the sense what we are making here it's exactly it's going to work with opposite if it is true it returns false if it is false it will return true so that is the behavior of this particular not condition so that simple example by default it is true but we are getting the output false because opposite the true if it is true it's going to return false so that is we are going to check and finally now what we are doing here this particular block, what we are doing here, not A. Already we are having, A is, e. already A is true, but we are making false. A false and B false. A false and B false. So both the conditions are satisfied. So we are returning true. And you can check here, A true. And the particular B, by default it is false. What we are doing here? We are making the B using the particular not condition we are making true here. Getting the point. So this is the way it's going to work here. 
but make sure whenever we are we are working with this particular and operator so if the two conditions are false so the entire expression is going to return false but to this is returning false but r condition checking the r condition is returning this block of code is returning true how it is returning by default a already true but conditionally we are making the particular b to the particular b variable we are making true using the particular not condition getting the point so observe we are going to make some uh, table here we'll work on the some table here how exactly it's going to work so something call a value so let me make it little bit so something bigger here so a value and b value and here i want to make a r b some more here a and a and b and last one not condition not condition so the same is going to applicable to the b also observe here if the b a is true i am making only t if the a is true b is false so this particular condition will return true this particular condition will return false this also will return false getting the point now one more here so both the conditions are false a false b false the r condition what is going to do is going to return false and and conditions also will return false only the finally we are making true here only the false will become true and one more here so a false b true and this expression will return true this expression like and operator will return sorry false here and this will make true and the last one here true this is also true and this is also will return and operator will return true sorry r operator will return return true same way and operator also will return true the not condition will return false so carefully observe this is the simple diagram here so in this particular r condition where we can use and and condition where we can use and whenever we are making this particular a true if the b false the r condition returning true and condition returning false and not condition also will returning false why the not condition returning false here by default it is true so that's the reason we are getting opposite the false value here same way if the two are false a and b false the entire expression is false the entire expression is false either you are you are working with uh, r condition or you are working with uh, and condition getting the point so only we are going to get the not condition is going to return true and some cases if the a false b true r condition returning true and condition returning false the not condition also returning true only the final the final one you can observe here whenever we are making two variables are true then only the and condition returning true except to this particular condition the remaining all the conditions we are making we are getting false here so that is the behavior of the particular and condition here getting the point so this is very important table here but in the real time application so more and more we are going to work this particular table okay so i want to uh, clear it up uh, any questions regarding this particular table still if you are having any questions let me know can you message me still if anyone having a question okay back to here now 
I am going to clear the this particular table. Back to here now. Instead of working with this particular bitwise R operator and AND operator, now what we can do? Simply we'll move on to the we'll move on to the the shortcut here. So there is no difference here. Just simply we are going to add one more AND condition here. But if you observe here, the entire expression, the entire expression is nothing but the whatever the output we got. The same thing we are going to get. If we want to, what we can do, we'll try to copy. I'm pasting it in here. Let me save first. Later we can paste here. Okay. So let me run the same example here. Observe here. The output I did not change here, but make sure. The A value we are getting true. Earlier also we got same. B also we got same here. And A R B. Now we are getting the true. And earlier also we got true. Same here. A and B. Same output we are getting. Not also we are getting same. Finally we are getting the true. And earlier also we got true. But what is the difference here? So in the which scenario we can work with this particular the shortcut. <coughs> Circuit breaker, sorry, this particular logical operator R, which we can go for the the bitwise arc operator here. Only the difference here, only the difference here. Observe, so simple example we are going to work. I want to give some real time example. Something called address not equals to null. I know if we are making this particular simple and what we are going to do because two condition we need to satisfy address dot something called get uh, name something that get name not equals to null so whenever we are making using this particular bitwise operator condition what is going to do even though if this condition it's failed even though this condition fail it will try to execute this particular condition. Getting the point. Even though this particular address not equals to null, what it's going to do is going to check with another condition here. But make sure if the address is null, so whenever we are trying to work with the same reference, we are going to get something called the null pointer exceptions here. Getting the point. So this is the drawbacks we are going to get. But where we can use whenever we are having the the values we can imagine when in this particular scenario we are going to get 100% values the object we are not going to get null so in that case only we can work with this particular bitwise operator and but now come back to the this particular operator call short circuit operator so whenever we are making this particular and operator here if this particular condition is returning false it will not go to this particular condition it will not go to this particular condition getting the point so that is the behavior this particular and condition same way the r also same way the r also it's going to work if the the first operator the first condition is returning true it will not check for the the else getting the point so that is the behavior we are going to have the short circuit operators here and in the real time applications also we will prefer this particular and and uh, this particular R operators getting the point. So these are about the logical operators and we'll move on to the one more here ternary operator. So ternary operator is nothing but what we are going to do. So simply. So int x comma y comma z getting the point. So here what I am doing here, I want to define three variables here. The three we are having the data type call X, Y and Z. And observe carefully. <coughs> so if I'm going to write here.
we don't want to make here only x y and is enough and uh, now x is equals to 10 i want to make and uh, the y value how i am going to get observed carefully so y equals to i am trying to initialize the value based on some condition the condition here x less than 10 the condition i am making here x less than 10 if this particular x less than 10 so we need to make one question mark here the question mark we are going to indicate ternary operator and after that what i am doing is i want to i want to <clears throat> change the value so that is called minus x if the condition is failure i want to return whatever the x value we are having carefully observe here the y value we are going to get when this particular condition will return true this condition will return true the uh, uh, like nearest to condition like after the the ternary operator whatever the nearest condition we are having so this going to execute whenever this particular block will return true getting the point if it is returning false what it will do this particular x will execute execute is nothing but the x value we are trying to initialize into the y getting the point so simply what i want to share here x less than 10 we are having question mark if it it returns true if it is returns true what will happen here so whatever we are having after this particular ternary operator is going to initialize to the y and if it is failing what we are doing here we are making some colon here and after the colon whatever the value we are having so this particular value is going to initialize to the y so this is the ternary operator is going to work so this is also very important in the real time applications more scenarios we are going to work this particular ternary operators here getting the point so simple example here we are going to have so the address not equals to null right <clears throat> address not equals to null what we are going to do simply simply we'll make a ternary operator and what we have did is just now address dot get name get name we are going to call later if it is returning the address is equals to null simply we can return null getting the point so this is the way the ternary operator is going to work in the real time application and now we'll try to check with the same example and do sys out simply x value y value let me run the same example so 10 9 10 why we are getting the 10 9 10 because this particular condition is returning false if the condition is returning false this file is going to initialize so so this is all about the the logical operators again from tomorrow we are going to check with the, the control statements like uh, if block we identified we'll move on to the one more uh, like else if and uh, switch case and uh, nested switch uh, we are going to have different different control statements and let me know like if you are having any questions regarding our today class Sorry, in bitwise and both the conditions get evaluated right yes the first one is false then also the second one will be checked yes the second one so it's fine to check thank you Sir, can you repeat the uh, how to when we need to use a single pipe and when we need to use a double pipe uh, the difference here basically in the real time application we can't work with a single uh, because as I, I explained just now 
even though the first condition is returning false simple example here i am making a and b and so what we are doing you are making only one of uh, like r operator here so here so same thing i want to make some a and b observe here even though this particular block is returning false right so it's time to check with this it's time to check with this so that is the behavior the particular bitwise uh, r operator having here so maybe we are going to get something called if the objects are null so we may get something called null point exception or if you are working with any other than the null pointer we are going to get exceptions here so instead of working with this we can check with this so what it will do whenever here we are getting an option if it is true if it is true for second condition it's not going to check this particular block but for this condition even though if it is true even though if it is true it will move on to the another block is trying to check whether the other condition is providing true or false so that is the nature having this particular bitwise r operator come back to the same thing this particular bitwise and operator even though if returning false if returning false this particular block it will move on to the this particular block when we are making this particular and condition basically and condition what we identified both the condition it has to be satisfied the both the condition it has to be returned true but even if it is returning false we don't want to check the second one even if it is returned true also the entire condition it's returned false only the nature having this particular bitwise op uh, and operator but come back to the this particular operator one condition return false it's not going to the the another condition because already it is false we don't want to check other condition even if it is returning true also the entire expression it is false only right so that is the nature having this particular and operators so in the real time any application if you are going you will find these operators only not this thank you sir okay any other questions okay so if we don't have anything we can conclude the class and we'll continue tomorrow with our new concepts